Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go for it. Go for it. All right. So, one of the things you know, I, ca- I come from um, an addictions background. Food addiction was my primary addiction, uh, sugar addiction, and uh, there was that and workaholism in the stock market. And then I, I was facing kidney failure at the age of thirty, and surrendered in the hospital bed and had had a spiritual experience, heavenly time, the spiritual experience and actually had a message, find a spiritual solution. And uh, very soon afterwards, I was given a DVD of a guy called Dr. David R. Hawkins and had another, what is called Kundalini spiritual. So as he started to speak on the TV, this tingling. Okay, I, did, I never had spiritual experiences before the age of 30. Uh, in my ego. But, um, and he talked about uh, three things, Dr. Hawkins. He was, of course, a miracles teacher, but his background was also 12 steps. Anyone from a 12-step back- background, thank you, will know that um, uh, 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 there was a guy called Bill W. Who, who was one of the originators, and he was also a, a, men- a mentor for um, <clears throat> okay. right. for uh, Dr. Hawkins. So he came from that background, and he sort of said, in order to release your addiction, if you have any kind of addictive issues, whether it's food, drugs, uh, alcohol, whatever it is. You know, the basics is to join okay. a 12-step fellowship. Yeah, like if it's alcohol, it would be Alcoholics Anonymous. Food, it would be Overeaters Anonymous. And that gives you the basics. People, uh, and that will give you a foundation in clearing away. Because uh, if you're an active addiction, that's a, that's a very, very inflated ego. If you're an active addiction. Then, you know, something more evolved to clear away at a, at a more advanced level would be the, um, the Course in Miracles, which takes it to the next level. Um, and so, so, and he was, uh, for, you know, this guy was, you know, I had just got kidney failure and I was in rampant food addiction to the extent that uh, after, after that spiritual experience, because I was in what I'd call end stage addiction, where you're literally trying to commit suicide with your addictions, it's that severe. You, uh, you're basically in a vibratory field where you're attracted to destruction and death. You know, the, you know, the ego talks about guilt, you know, and since the symbolism of guilt is the requirement for punishment. If you have too much guilt, you find a way to punish yourself. And I was punishing myself with food addiction, and, I was puni- and I, it was such, such an extreme that uh, they said, you know, avoid high potassium foods, you've got no kidneys, you know, and I just went out straight and binged on bananas, which is at the top of the potassium leaks on things, and had to have emergency treatment for a heart attack. But I knew that, um, you know, I was given this DVD of Hawkins, and I had to... Now, The Course in Miracles is 365 lessons to completely delete your ego, so that you can go into, uh, you know, it's that which is formless, timeless, and eternal. If you're not identified with any thought, or any th- image, or anything, or even tracking time within your ego, then you experience, you know, the, the self with the capital S, the eternal now, because when your ego is identified with any thought, image, or is tracking time, or is identified with the body, or is getting any kind of meaningful thought and identifying the thought as special, then of course you identify yourself as experientially as feeling limited. So, um, now here's the thing though, but Dr. Hawkins, who was a, a Course in Miracles teacher, um, also um, described this thing will take you to enlightenment. It's quite, it's quite simple. You just allow yourself to experience whatever, um, whatever um, you, you, you just be here right now and don't let your mind label anything that's occurring. You know, and don't make a story about anything and just allow any energies or vibrations to be experienced. Um, so if you do that, then uh, when you do that with stopping food addiction, you get extreme feelings coming up. And you just don't label them. You don't make a story about them. And you just allow, like all these feelings that come up are just repressed feelings from distractions, you know, distraction of TV, food, alcohol, relationships, uh, mobile phones, whatever it is, all these feelings arise and you don't, um, you don't 
I'm just shooting a video, but please do take a seat. Um, all, all these, um, all, all these emotions come up. It's like stacks of feelings that haven't been felt your whole lifetime because one has been distracted in the ego, distracted in overthinking, over TV watching, overeating, over drinking, over finding the new next thing to do. When you stop all of that and just be still and don't allow your ego to label, make a thought on what is, all this energy, these vibrations arise. And if you keep allowing that to go through, then it's like you empty it all out. And the ego actually dissolves because you're doing two things. In my view, the ego is comprised of repressed feelings or suppressed and repressed feelings and and uh, living and thoughts you know identified thoughts what is a belief well a belief is a thought which is very strongly identified so it recurs over and over again like i used to have this thought i'm fat i used to have it so that would be a thought which is a belief is something that is so strong that thought repeats constantly any thought which is uh, from the Course in Miracles, like all, all my thoughts are meaningless. So, any thought which has any spe special significance, any projected meaning attached to it, is a thought which will be comprised of the ego. Because the ego can hold on and have a, a limited identification if something is special or meaningful. So, if you let all these repressed feelings go and you let go and you make all thoughts meaningless, and you also um, do all of that. Also, uh, we'll talk about it later, you let go of identification with the body as self, tracking the body, the limits of the body, or that the body is self. Then you, then you release all this energy. And I just wanted to share with um, something on... And I had panic attacks. If you just sit still and don't allow your head to make a story or go off, I had panic attacks come, and I went through those panic attacks giving up food addiction, which was very extreme. First time I acted out on the feet, but the second time I went through it, the panic attacks, and that was like a, a mini death of the ego, because you're not escaping. You're letting those feelings, you're going through those feelings. And I just wanted to show one thing, a couple of things. If you're, if you're giving up an addiction and just sitting still, um, when, you know, this is the one thing, and I, I love repeating it, it's one of the most uh, transformative things I heard. And the Course in Miracles talks about, you know, it's nothing outside. You know, all the, everything outside is the false gods and the false idols. Nothing can be the source of salvation that is outside. So it can't be a person, place, a thought, an image. You can't find salvation. These are all the false gods and the false idols. But I was uh, sitting with an enlightened teacher, Muji, who was talking about his teacher, Ramana Maharishi. And, um, and he said this thing, it's like, when you, when you want something, if you want something, then you, you actually, uh, you're actually having a thought within your ego that you want. Like if I say, I want, I want a donut. Like it, it could be a donut, it could be a girlfriend, it could be a career, it doesn't really matter what it is. But if I want something, I'm having a thought within the ego that wants that thing. And when I get the thing, like if I get the donut, or whatever it is, then I will get, I will get, I will become happy. I will get a high. I'll get a spiritual high, which is actually, uh, what that high is, is a connection to God. It's not from the donut, but it's because I've been wanting that thing. And I'm in, actually in a state of distress because unconsciously I'm trying to get the thing to be, to complete me, you see, to feel good. So when I get the, eat the donut, suddenly the ego shuts up for a short time, it stays silent, and I get a connection to God. I get a connection to the source or the stillness or the eternal now, just for a short while, because I now have an absence of the distress of wanting the thing for a short time. And then the ego comes in after this high of eating the chocolate or having the alcohol, or whatever it is, or having a new girlfriend, or whatever it is. After that high, then the thought arises, it's not enough, it wears off. And then it says, well, you need another donut, or you need the girlfriend needs to be a bit different, or you need to be a, it's a slightly different, a different aspect to your career. So that's the thing. And then I realized that if I ever want to, you know, all enlightened teachers say, there's an, 
there's nothing they need or want. They all say the same thing. Every enlightened teacher I've said said there's nothing. If you say, can, you, can I give you something that you'd need or want, they all say there is nothing you can give them. And this is the thing, if you want something, then you will get, you, you can get into this addictive thing. So when you undo it, you know, they're, they're all illusions, chocolates, donuts, <clears throat> in the sense that, you know, to, to want them and to get a high from them is, is bondage, it's, ad it's addiction. Of course, if you're meeting, you know, like the, the, I guess the Course would say the holy instant, when the one, you know, well then you're, you're actually going past the idea of separation, or that there's a me and a you, that, that starts to evaporate in the states of oneness. So there is no, so you, you release that, uh, that fallacious idea at a certain aspect of spirituality where there is me and you. Uh, I think everyone's with me on that. So if I don't identify with my thoughts, and I don't identify with the body, and I'm not identifying with anything in the ego, then one experiences a sense of oneness. So there is no such thing as a... If I identify right now as my thoughts and my body, then I'll project that there's several bodies here in the room, because that's what I identify myself to be. But if I, identify, if I don't identify with the thoughts and the body, and I experience myself to be, if you like, the space, <coughs> or the oneness, or the field which is not identified with any limitation, time, thoughts, or body, then there's only one of us here, so there is no such thing as separation. So, just wanted to share that. So, the thing with, why was I sharing that around food addiction, which was symbolic, and letting go of the feelings, is because no food item, it's an illusion. You know, if you feel out all your oppressed feelings and don't go for the donuts or the chocolates, and keep all of that out, then ultimately the connection to source, the connection of being in the eternal now is always at this level. You're always in oneness and happiness and freedom. But if, you, if your ego identifies that it needs something, you'll always be in bondage because it'll always be a separated self wanting something in the future in order to feel complete. So if you just don't act on that thing and let all these repressed feelings go, then you'll actually go to a level where you won't be in, in an entrapment of getting a high from something your ego projects as being special. Doesn't mean that, you know, that's not, not to say that one can have, uh, it, it's, that's a thing of special relationships, but if you let that, if you dissolve your ego in that way, you'll have holy relationships, which is a different thing, which the Course means, Course aims for. <coughs>